So, so I started recording just so people know. Okay. Um, so I guess we have a, maybe just a few things. I have, I have something that I want to bring up, but maybe first for those of you that were at Open Source Summit Europe. Sure. On that go. I, want to well. I mean, we'll ask for an update next week too, but. Yeah. So I, I heard that a lot of people are super interested in the metrics still. I even heard uh, accounts that the metrics are being used. So that's good. By who? Um, I talked to Pear from Zalando. He had a message to the list asking if anyone in chaos wanted to hang out. Oh, yeah. Yep, yep. I saw that. So when okay. I talked to him, he was saying that he used the metrics in his work. Okay. Cool. Find, uh, key performance indicators. And so, yeah. I invite him to talk more to us, with us, about what he actually does. Okay, that'd be great. I'd uh, love to chat with him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in, in, indeed, but the, the key word I, I heard about chaos is that, hey, this might be a standard. So that's, that's a oh, really standard. good word. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's oh, I'm not trying to kill it. Yeah. <laughs> we, are far, we are far from that, of course, but uh, that would be a really good goal for us. You know, it's funny because um, actually in the charter, we actually, there's a, there's a line in there about standard setting. And I think the logic at the time was, um, you know how, are you familiar with the SPDX document? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know how it kind of standardized represent, standardizes representation of licensing and copyright information? I think there was, I think that's why it made it in there. Oh, so that makes sense. Yeah, that it would be a standardized way of representing, you know, health information. Mm -hmm. So, all right, well, Daniel, you just ratcheted up the, <laughs> the work that we need to do. We need to do it better. <laughs> the tutorial that we had for the diversity and inclusion uh, group went very well. We were the last session of the conference, and yet we had more participants than presenters. <laughs> oh, yay. <laughs> so That's we, a win. <laughs> yeah, we had four, four of us were there, and we had four that stayed permanently, and then a few moving in and out. So it was okay. well attended. And um, the, so we got some validation for the metrics that we have. There was no major hiccup. An issue that we definitely need to address um, better is the ethics part. Um, but otherwise, it's good confirmation that we are on the right path. OK, cool. What was the general topic? Uh, we had a tutorial on how to create a diversity and inclusion report. Oh, that's right. OK, sorry. So we went through what are the considerations, the different steps, and who needs to be involved, and so on. OK. Um... Do, is that kind of published, how to produce a report? Or was it more just talked about at the conference? We talked about at the conference. We want to eventually have step-by-step uh, -step instructions, but we are not there yet. Okay. So right now we have only a list of considerations and they're super okay. high level. Okay. And because it was a tutorial, you know, a lot of what we did was just get feedback from people and talk about, um, you know, kind of talk about how it works. And it was more of an interactive thing than us delivering a... Like, here's what to do. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, what did people say? Did they give you feedback at all? In terms of, like, what they wanted or how they would like it delivered? The format that we have right now seemed to resonate with the participants. Okay. And we had shown them a few of the pages that we'd created, and they were like, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Okay. So, Don, maybe you have something to add, but I don't remember any significant changes that you wanted to make because of feedback. No, I can't, I can't think of anything. It was a, it was a lot of sort of validation of, of what we've okay. done. And, and the only two pieces we really went through 
um, were events and governance, and we only went through little little bits of those. So we got some some more individual feedback on I on those, I think, but nothing nothing too specific. How long was the session? It wasn't that long, I'm guessing. Ninety minutes. Oh, well, that's pretty long. Okay. All right. Cool. Uh, great. I was just generally being annoying during this session, so. You were there. <laughs> Brian was there, yeah. It's really shocking, Brian. It's to write that I down. know. <laughs> I was trying something new. I put that in the, I put that in the notes, Brian. <laughs> Don wanted to throw a shoe at me. Yeah. <laughs> no. You're always invited back. <laughs> All right, this is great. Um, were there any things at the, um, were there any things at the conference that we kind of have it? The standard thing is kind of new, but were there any other, you know, like requests that people had or conversations or about tooling or about metrics or anything you just kind of heard word on the street? Mm, well, I, it was, it was involved in a panel about mentorship and we were presenting some of the numbers we had for OpenStack and uh, well, I was mentioning, uh, I was detailing about chaos and the work we were doing and so on, and people, I would say, was interested. So okay. the mentorship is something we should definitely have more in detail in the DNI working group. So. Okay. It's there as a placeholder, isn't it? It's there. I don't exactly remember where. I mean, the focused area, but uh, it's something we, I mean, there is a lot of things to do there, definitely. Okay, cool. Okay. Um, Don, I'm get you were there, weren't you? I'm guessing based on <laughs> getting getting grief from Brian. Um, <laughs> and based on me chiming in on what we did in our tutorial. Yeah, right. I, 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 I put it all together really quickly. Um, yes, I was there. I also did a presentation on my uh, Linux kernel mailing list research. Okay. So that went really well. People, there were some maintainers and other uh, kernel contributors in the audience, and they seemed to agree with me, and nobody threw anything at me, and nobody said I was crazy and way off base, which is good because I've already submitted the paper copy of the dissertation, so it's too late, too yeah. late if anybody disagrees with me. So you just got some field validity. <laughs> on work. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, that's cool. Does that, how does that, does that, any of that work kind of roll into the DNI stuff? Is it? Or is it uh, no, it had actually nothing to do with nothing to do with DNI. My interest in DNI is is separate, okay. and it doesn't have that much to do with the Chaos Project because I was using all of the old Metrics Grimoire tools, so ML Stats and um, the uh, CBS Anali, some of the some of the older stuff because that's what I started on three okay. and a half years ago when I started the PhD. Yeah, that's how it goes, isn't it? <laughs> With that it reason. is. It is. I would have liked to have actually just kind of mid midway sort of switched all the new tools because they're cool and shiny and awesome. But um, well, then it could take longer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I wanted to just finish. I was on the the home stretch. All right, eyes, cool. Eyes towards the goal. Um, all right, cool. Um, all right, anything else from Europe? So after, um, sorry, yes, Brian. No, no real, um, nothing really substantive other than I had no less than four people tell me that Emma Irwin's uh, presentation on inclusive open source governance was fantastic. That's and cool. there, if we can officially recognize that somewhere, that would be great because she got, and, and I, misfired on the schedule and I couldn't go see it myself, but uh, yeah. Um, do, do they record the sessions? Does anybody know? No, only only the keynotes and the co the sessions for embedded Linux, embedded Linux conference were okay. recorded. None of the other general sessions were recorded. Okay. Um, I'll ask Kevin to try to maybe, I'm thinking out loud here. Mm -hmm. You know how Kevin kind of keeps the website updated with um, things that have occurred? Mm -hmm. Your point, Brian, maybe we can highlight it there. It's a good idea. 
and just kind of highlight all the work that, that was going on as well. I'm sure Kevin kind of has that as an, on his radar, um, but I'll circle back with him. Cool. So after right. the summit, yeah. I went to the Sustain Summit that was in London. It was a one day on conference about how to make open source sustainable. And all of the big names, I want to say all of the big names were there, including Jim Zemlin and uh, several others from the summit. Have okay. traveled the, so whenever I talk to someone, they, they seem to already know chaos. So in the, that area, um, the work that we do is known. Okay. So that was good to know. And we have several ideas for um, what to do next. And one of them is actually metrics related. And that is a um, an index or a list of donations from companies to projects and specifically donations that are not tied to any specific thing or uh, issue or work. Do you mean money. cash donations? Are you talking about people donating their legacy code for us to maintain? <laughs> cash. Cash, okay. Cash yeah, is specifically money. from companies um, okay. as, a, as a way or similar to how you have consumer ratings and others. Because one of the issues talked about was how if you donate money to a project, you get a one-time blog post or whatnot, and then it's gone. And so we want to create a list where it's visible over a longer period of time. So this would be a project, project by project thing. This would aggregate across all open source projects and all company donations, aggregating mm -hmm. everything in one place. And uh, Justin Dorfman from Sticker Mule is super interested in this. Already put together a prototype, which I can share if anyone is interested. Yeah. And then uh, Pia from Open Collective is also very supportive and wants to drive this forward. Well, where does this slot into the stuff that we're doing right now? It's another metric where For you what? end up in on this index list. Is it a... Yeah. Okay. So the metric is, I mean, it's kind of a two-way metric that each company could keep track of the cash they contributed, but also projects could demonstrate some degree of um, diversity in who's giving money yep. to them as well. How much money they collect, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yeah, please do share that. Did you put it in the chat at all or? Um, no, I have not. Is it that kind of thing? Here, I'll put it in the chat. Is it like a web page? Yes, yes. And this is, as I said, the idea, we got this on Thursday, so it's an early prototype or first prototype. Okay. Where are they, how do they get their data? Do you know? The idea is to crowdsource it. So scour the web and put it in there. If someone hears about it, put it in there. Right. And then companies can also self-report, but they have to provide a link to a published news article or something to verify. <laughs> they actually did it. Okay. All right. Cool. Yeah. And then at MozFest, Rainier and I had a session on open community metrics and privacy. And we are currently working on a blog post to share the results or what was discussed there. Okay. So there's more to come. Sounds good. I've got the notes from that open right now. Uh, we got a lot from that session too, I think. It was a really good session. It was engaging. And that was my hero at MozFest because he took copious notes everywhere. That helps. At all of my sessions. Thank you again, Matt. Yeah, not me, Matt. Don't give me credit, Matt, Matt. Other Matt. <laughs> Uh, all right, great. Sounds like there were a lot of, that's why you were gone so long, Georg. Yes. <laughs> great. Oh. All right. Um, anything else from, from abroad? Yeah. Is put it that way, or from Europe, I'll say? Because some of I you just were. I opened the window and sent the old computer monitor crashing to the ground. So. 
out, did it go out the window or did it? No, well, it's broken. Yeah, it came in actually. It, the window pulls in, so okay. It's a very long window. All right. Sorry. Uh, That's what the crash that you heard was. I didn't even hear a crash. I'm not torturing anyone here, I promise. <laughs> uh, yeah, and Carter's still there. Um, so okay, I have a proposal for people, and I'm just going to put it out there. So this is with respect to um, the repository and all that kind of stuff. So, okay, so here, just hear me out and you can tell me it's a stupid idea if you want. Um, but I, I propose, so right now we have essentially four um, working groups. We have DNI, we have growth maturity and decline, we have risk and we have value. Mm -hmm. I suggest that we get rid of risk and value and just roll them into growth maturity and decline. In terms of the repositories? Just in terms of general thinking that we say chaos right now at the moment is, is a work group on diversity and inclusion, full stop. And it's the work that the DNI group is doing. No, I mean, I'm not suggesting any sort of change there. And then there's another working group on growth, maturity and decline. And it continues to do the work that you're doing now, but it comes to also include uh, license information. And it also comes to include um, downstream, downstream dependencies, which is another metric that we have that we've been thinking about with value. That's it. That we, that we stop risk and value. Again, you can tell me I'm kooks. I just, I'm not making any sense here, but that we, that we get rid of risk and value as their own work groups and just roll the ideas of license and compliance information into growth, maturity, and decline. I think I could easily argue that that is a, a measure of maturity. And the same with value, that again, perhaps a measure of maturity, that if there's a lot of dependencies, a lot of downstream dependencies on a project, that's a measure of, of maturity. I, I think, I think oh, that's, yeah, go ahead. Th this might make sense just because risk and value haven't received much attention. That's um, also part of maybe, it. Maybe eventually they can be spun out into separate working groups if they have enough content to warrant it. Um, I, I would say one thing that I don't know would fit into growth maturity and decline is human factors. That seems like it's more, which is under risk. Um, that seems like it's more related to diversity and inclusion. Okay. Because then you're looking at a diversity of, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's developer and user centric, which is I know exactly what you're talking focused about. on the people, not on the yep. code base. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, I do see the, I do see a time where when we, if we're going to go deep on risk and license compliant, we're going to need, I guess, some kind of I don't know, task force or specialized subgroup that, that does some work to frame that out, that, that that's probably not mainlined for much of, for what is currently defined under growth maturity and decline. And there, and there are groups that are right. doing like between SPDX and there are groups, that, the LF that are doing this between open chain and SPDX. Yeah, so maybe it's just referring to this other work that's being done and incorporating some of it. Exactly, um, that's my thought. Yeah. My, my only concern with rolling these into the existing ones is that we've already been neglecting those ideas. And if we sort of bury them under the other existing working groups, are we just going to continue to neglect those, uh, those mm -hmm. concepts? Or are we, is oh. it <laughs> I'm hoping. I'm hoping quite the opposite, and I'll I'll, exp I'll try to explain why. Um, my hope is my hope is no. So I guess I have a couple things, a couple a couple um, things that I'm trying to do is that if we if we keep risk and value as working groups, and one of my concerns is that they have to have their own standing meeting, and I think we're all a little spread thin on <laughs> on meetings. And if we can start incorporating the, the discussion of that into the, I'm kind of co-opting the growth maturity and decline meeting, but start actually talking about license and compliance issues in growth maturity and decline in that meeting, then mm -hmm. they may actually get more love. Mm -hmm. Like they're actually not being talked about right now. 
no. really to any degree. And so I'm hoping that this will actually bring these ideas into an existing meeting and we'll actually talk about them more, even if they just get five minutes a week. <laughs> <laughs> and then perhaps to Ben's point, if they really do become um, you know, they really do start, say, taking over that meeting time, then maybe they can be spun back out. Um, one of the other things I'm always trying to think about is, is how we are um, expressing the work that we're doing to people that aren't us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as, you know, it, on your dissertation, right, like we need to create the clearest message possible mm -hmm. for the, for the external reader mm -hmm. um, while still getting the work done. And two working groups to me is a much simpler cell than four working groups. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's all. That was, you know, I'm, again. I'm, and I think it also helps prevent a dilution of the message, you know. So now if you go to like the metrics repo and you see these four different domains, but really only two of them have had a lot of thought put into them then it kind of dilutes the message a little bit if there's a lot of content that just isn't getting the attention it should be getting. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think the other will take a concerted yeah. effort within the two, um, the two groups to incorporate the kind of the new additional, additional focus. So yeah. we, should just, we should just make sure that that happens. And then right. if, if that happens, then I think we'll be, I think we'll be good. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, I think maybe I would, some of it can, so I think some of risk and some of value are probably part of DNI, and I don't think anybody's gonna be horribly territorial about those crossover things. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I get, I get it. Yeah, and I'm pretty interested in the the value bits. To be honest, um, I didn't really have the bandwidth to engage with it since we hadn't really done anything with it, and I didn't want to. Didn't have the bandwidth to kind of start it up, but if the, if a lot of that is going to move into the um, GMD. GMD working group, maybe I'll I'll start coming to that as well. Okay, that'd be great. And but, the, GM, the GMD working group is now meeting every Wednesday at eleven. Eleven in what time zone? Central. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's six p.m. Central European time. And okay, so five five p.m. for me. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know which time zone you were in, actually. Uh, yeah, I'm in, I'm in London, so we're an hour hour before. Okay. Rest of Europe. Okay, these are great. I took I took a few notes, and I think to to Ben's point and to Don's point is making sure that the other groups are able to incorporate what has already been discussed to this point in these other working groups. Uh, again, I'll bring this up next week, but I just wanted to kind of get some feelers here. Then there was another part on this. Um, is and this actually came from a, a discussion um, in the I think it kind of stemmed from the DNI group. Uh, it was on GitHub that was the metrics repository when you click on DNI should just point to the work that's occurring in the DNI group. Yeah, so right now the way that it, it's set up is the the metrics repository actually has these four kind of working groups set up. And that's where I think you were looking, Ben, to see kind of what was in um, in the, the risk one. You know what I mean? I, I'm guessing that's where you went to see how risk was structured. And so the proposal was is that when you click on diversity and inclusion within the metrics repository, you actually just go over to the DNI work group. You just head over there. Those are the, those are the metrics. That's it. So those are what DNI is about at the moment. And then, you know, uh, it's not conversely, but um, in in a similar vein, it would hold true for GMD that you would, if we're going to do that for diversity and inclusion, we would do the same thing with GMD. And if you go to the metrics repository and click on growth maturity and decline, you simply go over to the growth maturity and decline work group and take a look at the metrics that they are putting forward. I mean, if, just in terms of consistency. Um, and then risk and value would subsequently go away or they'd be rolled into the other, into those other working groups. Um, and then the metrics repository really honestly just becomes the laundry list of metrics. That's, that's really all that it is. You know, that huge, that huge list of metrics that we have. Mm -hmm. 
It, it really literally just becomes that with pointers to the respective, to the two respective working groups. Yeah, that's a really good point. The, uh, I guess I'd never gone from the metrics repository to the diversity and inclusion page because that, that really has very little to do with anything that we're working on reading, reading through that page. <laughs> Correct. And we need to, and the work that you're doing is more important than what's sitting in the metrics repository. That's yeah. the real value is what's in the working groups, not on that metrics page. So I see two values in doing this. One or two very concrete values. One is that we eliminate duplication. Yep. And second, we eliminate the, um, the trouble we have with merging the work back into the metrics repository because that no longer is a goal that we have. Correct. The authority just resides in the work groups. Because the, the, the latter part, that rolling into back into the metrics repository suggests that the metrics repository is actually the authority. When in fact, mm -hmm. there's no reason for that to be the case. So those are, and these are all in my mind kind of related to one another. The initial, let's go from four working groups down to two and then mm -hmm. clean up the respective repositories. So um, seems like it's fairly positive. Does anybody want to chime in against? So, so explain, explain to me what changes would come to the metrics repository then. So the, I think there's, I'm not looking at it right now, but I, I think there's a four markdowns that go to diversity and inclusion, growth, maturity and decline and risk and so on and so forth. If you click on that markdown page, it actually takes you to an, another page within the metrics repository that kind of defines what the important metrics are for DNI or what the important metrics are for growth, maturity and decline. So, that, that bottom page that I just mentioned would actually go away. So you would click on diversity and inclusion markdown page or the diversity and inclusion MD, and it would just take you to the diversity and inclusion work group. Now granted, it wouldn't be a markdown anymore. It would just be a, a link over to the work group. So I'm, I'm having a hard time understanding what the purpose of the metrics repo would even be at that point. Well, so <laughs> You're correct. So um, what I suggested was the only thing that would be housed in the, the metrics repository would be the laundry list of just all of the individual metrics. So for example, when- Aren't those also listed in the, at least, at least the, it looks like growth and trade decline has those, <laughs> right? That long activity metrics list? Uh, well, I mean, it, I think a lot of the links don't, uh, actually point to anything yet. Yeah, there's, we've got a couple pull requests in the growth maturity and decline repo when we did some migration, a bunch of links got broken. And so in most cases, the definitions of those metrics do exist. And as soon as a pull request is merged, you'll be able to see them. Because uh, So here's, here's my concern. I, I have two concerns with this. One is that it, it kind of fractures our community a little bit um, because people working on GMD are probably also gonna have input on DNI and, and reverse will also be true. And if all the work is happening in two separate repositories, then um, you know, it, it just, it, it fractures our effort into these two silos essentially. Um, and then the second concern I have is that we, we wanna make sure that we're maintaining some form of consistency with how we, we present all of this information and how we like form all this information. And I think that's a lot more difficult to do when it's broken up between two separate repositories or, or three or whatever the old yeah. <laughs> comes out to be. Um, so it, it almost seems to me like we're eliminating the, the, the entire reason for the metrics repository to even exist. And we're just breaking this up into two separate projects, one for diversity inclusion, one for growth and trade decline. And I don't know, I don't, in my opinion, I don't think that's probably going to be the best approach. Okay. There's certainly been some discussions about how to organize repositories in the growth maturity decline meeting. Um, and I would say right, right now, things have, with people who participate, things have kind of landed on separate repositories. I do, I see your point. 
my my main concern with having separate repositories, especially if we're going back to two working groups instead of four, is now it like for a newcomer, it's much harder to figure out where the work is happening. Yeah, I, I mean, is would it be possible for us to maybe create a directory within like the metrics repo for each working group and yes. allow them to just do all of their work within that directory? Oh, I see what you're saying. Mm -hmm. So that way everything is still happening within one repo. And we basically have that, but we're still doing the work in separate repos right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, I am... I, ben, I jotted down your notes about fracturing effort and maintaining consistency. I just, I can't respond. I have to go because I'm at the bottom <laughs> of the hour. <laughs> so I'm we'll talking about this next week. Ignoring this. A hundred percent. These are points very well taken. Um, and I can bring them up probably next week and in, in the next week's meeting, to, or we can continue this conversation at least. I just have to roll. Yeah, have to yeah let's do that. Yep. Okay. Right on. I'm, I'm out. You can all stay in, but I'm, I'm leaving. And you can also bring that up in the GMB meeting tomorrow if you want, Ben. Oh. Around. Yep, I can do that. I will. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. Bye. I got a message that Don is the host now. <laughs> Who is? Don? Oh, no. <laughs> Not sure how that happened. Uh, Matt handed it over to you. <laughs> Silent but deadly delegation. <laughs> that doesn't uh, mean I'm hosting. I'm out. All right. <laughs> just kidding. It just means you can control the record button. Uh, should should I press record or? It's already recording. So okay, I think good. when you end, I think it just kicks us all out now. Is what happens. So you decide oh, you're okay. gonna. Oh, it does. Oh, yeah, it does say recording, and I do have control over that. Woo, power. <laughs> so I don't have anything else, to be honest. I don't. Yeah, I'm good. All right. Anybody else, if nobody else has anything, then I guess we can go. But if somebody has something, we can talk about it. Oh, one, one thing that came up uh, several times was a question about are we looking at the quality of code as a metric and i wasn't sure where we were on that um that would typically be s recorded in a code review mm -hmm. um and i suppose to the extent that a repository has a testing suite that's running against it we could evaluate that it's going to become more important as a lot of the open source projects go to the end of the wire and become more Internet of Things, safety critical or safety semi-critical. I think, I think um, quality and, you know, I guess deterministicness is going to become a factor, but there's different ways that you can, you know, part of it is um, testing. I think part of it is just code reviews. I mean, isn't, isn't quality by definition a qualitative thing? So if it's qualitative, it's not really something you gather numbers on per se. It's something that you have to analyze to understand. There, there are metrics that could contribute to the quality of something like the number of security bugs, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, but that isn't necessarily a gauge of quality. It's, a, it's, it's part of, it's just one component of a bigger picture. Yeah, I mean, and I agree with you. One of the reasons I was calling out code reviews and test coverage is because those are discrete measurable things that would feed into somebody's assessment of quality. Um, mm -hmm. But but yeah, I think it, it is qualitative. So are there, and I, and I don't know the software engineering literature enough to know this, but it, are there, uh, analysis methods to determine quality of code within wow. where we can analyze the source code and then have more numbers to base this qualitative opinion on? I mean, safety critical systems do this all the time. Um, there is statistical quality measurement 
but I've only encountered it when I worked and I, I worked in the pacemaker industry for five years and that's the only place I've ever encountered like hardcore full coverage testing covering every state of a program um, anything back from safety critical is I think more much more judgment yeah basically de depending on depending on the domain there are several metrics that might be useful um, as far as my knowledge um, in terms of quality of the code. I mean, there are, we, we have the usual metrics as cyclomatic complexity or all of this stuff. So basically the more complex things, the less quality suppose they have and so on. But uh, well, there, there is a whole domain and a bunch of companies working in, in that area. Uh, so we can, if you want, one of the things we can do within chaos is to look for a specific white papers and academic papers that may be of interest um, say, well, this is, this is there. And I, as, as far as my perception, this is a, a well-known domain in the industry. So it's just a matter of bringing the knowledge to chaos if we are interested. But okay. Yeah, that's, that's helpful to know for when I can ask the next time. <laughs> I think it would make, it's the kind of thing that might be useful or figuring out what the interest is if we had a place that we kept or a bucket we could put notes or references in, even a markdown document somewhere. Yeah, then th there are of course other, um, so for just an example, I, I remember when I was, I was uh, when I was doing the PhD, there was a paper by uh, Nagapan, some researcher from Microsoft. and. Basically, what this researcher was saying is, hey, if we are using the usual um, quality metrics for the source code, we have this accurate when, when looking for code smells, right? Which are, you know, <coughs> smelly areas of the code that might be prone to be buggy and so on. While if we try to use a human uh, approach with this of counting things like number of people leaving the community, well, they were talking about software development teams within Microsoft, they they realized that they had a higher accuracy in those terms when looking for those code smells. So what does it mean, the quality of the code? Is that, that uh, interesting if you compare to other metrics? It's probably something that we can discuss here in Chaos. Um, I don't know if, if it's interesting, interesting by itself just to focus on one of the areas, but I would say that we may need a more um, what's the word, holistic approach in chaos, like having several components in mind. So as, as we were discussing before, if we are, for instance, focusing in diversity and inclusion, uh, there are several areas that we may uh, need to look for concepts as value or impact, right, within the, within the community in that working group. So I would say, or well, my suggestion would be that we can have all of these topics in each of the working groups, but uh, just an idea, I don't know. Don't sleep too much. Okay. I'm open to that. I don't want to own doing it, but I'm open to it. Okay. That, that's exactly it. So my reply is always that, yes, we are aware that such metrics exist, but no one has stepped up to want to do the work. So we are focusing on what the people in the community are interested in. Hmm. And I think, I think it's likely that somebody with a safety critical system will come to us eventually because that is where there's a lot of development in these real time kinds of things right now. Yeah, it's a lot of like big growth area. So I expect if we sit still and keep doing what we're doing, that will come to us. All right, thank you. So, more topics. Is this where we awkwardly stare at each other? So yes, it's where we awkwardly stare. <laughs> and then someone says, if no one else has anything to say, then we should go. But if someone else has something to say, well, I'll no. <laughs> Gary, I did want to say, I have not forgotten your blog article, and I'm, I'm in the process of writing it right now. That's awesome. Thanks, Ben. I do have a quick question. So, so all of a sudden, since I'm in charge of the recording, I press stop. But is there anything I need to do? Like, do I? It okay. Magically, just gets uploaded to Matt's account, and he can share it. I believe. 
perfect. That's all I needed to know. Oh, there was, uh, so in the DNI group, we had a conversation about, um, and this goes back to the point, Ben, that you had made with aligning everything, keeping everything on the same path. So we had uh, questions about, okay, so what, where is chaos now? What are the goals? Are we still on track to what we wanted to accomplish? Did our direction change? And there was the idea to maybe have uh, a session where we all get together and realign what we are doing and get on the same page again, now that we are a year old. Donna, I think you were there when we had that conversation. Yeah. Yeah, because we haven't, I feel like we haven't really revisited sort of the goals for chaos overall. Um, and we've all been working on this pretty hard for, for a little over a year. It might be, it might be good just to sink back and make sure that the things that were initially defined, <coughs> sorry, as the goals are still really, really the goals and the charter and things like that. This is definitely something we should bring up next week when we have the full meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can bring it up in the next full meeting and then maybe maybe tee up a discussion in the full meeting after that. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, if no one else has anything to say, then have a good day, everyone. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye.